we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil He doth richly nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other in Jesus, but to trust and obey. The scripture reading for this morning is found in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 34 to 35. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. A blessed Sunday to everyone. And uh, I know that today, a lot of us are very much in tune on social media. That's probably because of the fact that a lot of us are just staying home. And because of social media, I myself have witnessed that there were some who have become overnight sensations and have become celebrities on social media. And I think, uh, that is not only now. I think even the, during the time of Jesus, there was also an instance where during the ministry of Jesus Christ, he became an immediate sensation. And, and let's try to read about this in John chapter 4. Now, if you remember, um, in, a, in, in, uh, in the book of John, there was the very first miracle mentioned in the opening chapters of John where Jesus turned water into wine. And it's even recorded in John as the very first miraculous sign that he did. Now, this morning we're going to talk about the second miraculous sign that he did in 
Galilee. So, um, the, the passage that we're going to read is found in John chapter 4, verse 43 going down. And in for, verse 43, it says, And after two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Now, he was mentioning this because he was going to Galilee. And if you remember, uh, there were going to be three places here that we will mention. Uh, one is Capernaum, the other one is Cana, and the third is Nazareth. So Nazareth, of course, if we know our uh, background in the Bible, is where Jesus grew up. So he was referring to Nazareth when he said that a prophet has no honor in his own country because the people in Nazareth rejected him. But when he arrived in Galilee, this is in verse uh, 45, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Now, if you would like to uh, refer to that, I'll just turn back a little bit. And it's found in John chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, let me read. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name. And so, of course, that reputation preceded him so that when he came to Galilee, back to his own territory, this time the reaction was different. Instead of rejecting him, they all gathered together and welcomed him. But let me ask you, was Jesus wrong when he made that comment? Was Jesus wrong when he said that a prophet has no honor in his own country? This time when he arrived, people gathered together, they welcomed him. So, was he wrong? Now let me tell you, what is the purpose of a prophet? Is the purpose of a prophet only to perform miracles and wonders? Or is it to deliver the message of God? Now, if you look at it here, these people gathered together because they saw the signs and wonders. And yes, of course, because of that sign and wonder, some of them were convinced, but many were just curious. They just want to see these signs and wonders again. It's just like watching a circus. Like, here comes this miracle man. We want to see something wonderful. So they all welcomed him. But in their heart, many of them, them only wanted to see the miraculous signs. And so when he got there, he didn't go to Nazareth. Because Nazareth, as we all know, his hometown, well, the people there would behave differently from the others in that area. In Cana, of course, they would welcome him because he turned water into wine. So instead of going to Nazareth, he went to Cana. And when he was there, a high official, a royal official, as it's stated here, heard about him. Now, this royal official had a son, and his son was sick. He didn't say what kind of sickness it was, but it said the son was dying. And so this official immediately went there, paid him a visit, and ask him if he's willing to heal his son. And you know what Jesus said? Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. That's what he said. But the royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus replied, You may go. Your son will live. And that's all that Jesus said. He didn't do anything else. He just said, you may go. Your son will live. And the man took Jesus at his word. And this is very important because sometimes when we're thinking about whether to trust a person or not, it hinges on the fact how heavy those words are. But for this man, he knew that the word of Jesus is all it will take. And so, Without further ado, he went home, started on his journey. As he was going home, he met some of his servants. And the servant said, Master, your son is well. And then he asked them, When? And, and the servant said, The fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Now, at the seventh hour, that's approximately 
one o'clock and we already know how uh, the, the Jewish time uh, is reckoned. Seventh hour means right after noon, which is about 1 p.m. So at around 1 p.m., the fever left him. And then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. And of course, it's stated here, this was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed having come from Judea to Galilee. Now, that's the story, okay? And, and let's try to go back this time to look at the details of the story. First, of course, was the fact that the Galileans did welcome him. And that particular royal official immediately knew of his coming. When he was in Cana, this royal official went there to seek him. Now, if you would know the distance between Capernaum and uh, Cana, that's approximately about 30 kilometers away. And, and you know, during those times, they didn't have cars, they didn't have... <clears throat> uh, the fastest probably would be by horse. But in this case, probably this man was just walking or probably taking a donkey. And it will take time. <clears throat> 30 kilometers is not near. Now, let me ask you, if you were in this man's situation, you have a son that is dying in bed. Are you willing to leave your son and go somewhere else? I know that's going to be very difficult. The son is dying. The son is lying there, probably barely conscious. But when he heard that Jesus came, he was willing to leave his son. He was willing to to leave him to go to Jesus. In other words, there was this point in which he had this decision. Should I leave my son? He's dying. Should I go there to see Jesus? Or should I just stay with my son and be with him until the last moment? But if he's going to stay here, then there is no hope for this son. If I go there, there might be hope for this son but what if he will die while I'm away? So can, can't you see? Of course, this particular part of the story was not told in detail, but that's probably what's in the mind of that father. I'm sure there are many fathers watching this video. And you know what it is, how it is, when you love your son or daughter, you are willing to do everything for them. And so in this case, the father was willing to take that risk. But together with that risk must have been trust, must have been faith. And that's why when I was reading this story, I knew immediately this father had faith. Even before he set out, he had faith because he left his dying son. Leaving a dying son for nothing would be senseless. But if he would leave that son because there is hope, then that's probably something. And so he left. 30 kilometers takes about, I was, I was looking it up, and if it's going to be by foot, it would probably take about more than seven to eight hours. And so that's the very reason why when he was about to go back and he met the servants, and the servant he was asking the servant, when did that son get well? He said, that was yesterday. In other words, it was like more than a day's travel. Yesterday when he was still talking with Jesus and Jesus said, you go home, you go ahead. Your son will live. And it was yesterday noon. So he probably had to spend the night somewhere else, either still in Cana or probably on the road. This reminds me of something. Uh, there's this interesting story. You know how the people uh, in some countries catch monkeys? 
you know what they do is they will probably use a gourd or or probably for us Filipinos it would be more uh, we, it could be more familiar if we will talk about a coconut the very big coconut and what they do is to chop off the top and put a small hole inside like tiny hole on top of the coconut and then they will leave the coconut there in the field and then they will hide and wait and a monkey would come and he would be curious, he would be drinking. I think if you would uh, search and Google it on YouTube, you could probably see it. And then he would start taking things from inside the coconut. Some would probably intentionally put some fruits inside. Others would just leave it at that because the monkey would have a tendency to get the coconut meat. And once he gets his handful, that monkey will never let go. He would just hold on to it and then he will try to pull his hand and it, 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 it won't come out. It won't come loose because the hole is just enough for that hand to go in. But once it grasps something, it will never pull free. And that monkey will never let go even if people will come and capture it. He will never let go of the things that he had inside. And of course, to his disadvantage. Sometimes it reminds us of ourselves that we are not willing to let go of certain things to our detriment. And I would like to share with you a passage in Mark. Now, this particular verse can be found in all four Gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But I'm just reading Mark here. It's in Mark chapter 8, verse 35. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the Gospel will save it. It is like saying, you will gain everything when you know how to let go. Now, in the four Gospels, Matthew, Matthew even states it twice, one in chapter 10, one in chapter 16. And, and it is always preceded by deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And then this verse follows then. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. And then whoever, wants, whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So the, the conditions in Matthew and even in Mark is to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. In John, it is a little bit different. In John, it says, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it will remain like one seed. Of course, I'm paraphrasing this. But if you let that seed fall into the ground and let it die, get buried in the ground, it will grow and it will produce more seeds, of course, because the plant grows. And then this verse follows. In Luke, another thing. In Luke, it talks about Lot's wife. And it says, remember Lot's wife. Now, what was the story with Lot's wife? They were about to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were supposed to leave everything behind. But Lot's wife turned around. He looked back. He was looking back at everything that they have left behind. And he, she was feeling like it's all a waste. I wish I could take everything with me. But they were told never to look back. And the analogy is the same. We are supposed to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. And, and this man's example points to that principle. For the man, the riches, the position, the fame is nothing compared to what is most precious to him that time. And that is the life of his son. The son is the most precious thing that he has. But yet at the time, he was willing to leave that son behind. And had to go and travel 30 kilometers away. Just so he will have an encounter with Jesus. And to personally beg Jesus. You know, he's a high official. He could have easily said, tell Jesus to come here. Because he's a royal official, probably in the court of Herod. But the action 
itself points to the fact that he has recognized Jesus as somebody more than just a teacher. Jesus was a man who was able to perform all these miracles. And he knew that the Spirit of God was with Jesus. So without any hesitation, he went there. And he personally begged. I mean, if you would probably see the picture, here comes somebody dressed as a carpenter with this shabby clothing, probably. <clears throat> and here comes this person in a royal robe because he's a royal official. And he's probably just begging Jesus, please, please. And Jesus said, you may go. <clears throat> Your son will live. Brothers and sisters, what we see here is again a slow transition. This man set out because he did believe that there is hope. He went to try to see Jesus, and he did. And then he went to beg Jesus, and Jesus did listen. And Jesus granted his heart's desire. So the very first thing that he did <clears throat> was to believe. Was to believe that there is hope found in Christ. But the second thing that he did was to take his word for it. To trust the word of Christ. It's just a word. He just said, go. Your son will live. For us, we would probably ask, is that all Jesus? Are you not going to raise your hand and do a dance for us or whatever? Or maybe do some ritual to make sure that my son will leave? No, it was just a word. Jesus said, you may go. Your son will leave. That was all. And he put that into action. He took Jesus' word in his heart. He had faith. He believed. And so he went. So it's not only about trusting it is also about obeying. The obedience is proof of your trust. Because if he did not go home and do it, then that means he did not really believe in Jesus. He could have tarried a while longer in Cana, still looking probably for another doctor to give him a second opinion or something else. But no. In his heart, he knew, this is it. I trust I trust that this is the Messiah. I trust that this is the Christ who is going to heal my sons. So he left. So from going there believing, he did the obeying, which is the action. But you know, there was something else that happened. And the third thing that happened was that when he got home and his son really got well, in verse uh, in verse 50, 53, then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. So it was him who went there believing, but not only believing, he took Jesus' word for it and acted on it. But the third is that the whole household believed. Not only him, the whole household believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says here, this is the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed in that area in Galilee. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we might begin to doubt when we read John 3.16 and it says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. I'm sure many of us would probably say, is that all? Shouldn't be doing this? Or shouldn't we be doing that ritual? Or shouldn't we be performing this ceremony? But in the same way as Jesus told this man, you go, your son will live. Are you willing to take Jesus' word? Are you willing to believe that what he said is true? 
that if you believe in Him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Truly, that is hope. Truly, that is the kind of hope that we need today. Everywhere we turn, people are having problems, and life seems to be too short. Life can sometimes become so uncertain. But believe in what He said. Believe in His promises. And we will have eternal hope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much for your promises to us. Allow us, Lord, to believe you, to obey you, and to tell others about you. Father, you are so good and kind that you sent your son Jesus and that he paid the price for the penalty of sin. And today, we have that hope. We are assured. But hopefully, this thing will not just stop with us. That we can share this to everyone to tell them, that there is that hope that beyond this life there is eternity with Christ waiting for us if we give our life to the Lord Jesus Father we continue to pray for those who are not well we ask for your healing in the same way we believe Lord that you are the master of time and space that even so far away, a single word from you can heal people. And in the same way, Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, forever. And that same command and the same power is still available. And so we are praying, Lord, for those who are sick, that you will extend your healing touch on them and restore them, grant them healing get them back on their feet so that they will remember to glorify and praise you when they get well. And Father, we pray for those who are on the front lines, continually keep them safe. And for everyone that needs to talk with other people in business, in their work, Lord, please keep them safe too. I pray that you will restore the economy of our country allow everyone to at least have a decent job that everyone can have financial stability at least something to earn a living allow them to be able to feed themselves and their household father this is our cry to you and i pray lord that you pour out your blessing strengthen us and allow us to learn to adapt in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. As the world changes, allow us also to change according to the situations that we are in. But help us never to compromise our faith, to always trust in you. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Oh,